Hello, this is Dino Lopez. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to create an easy Rails shell application in 10 easy steps. Basically, we want to start showing what is a, a shell command line, passing some parameters, some input to the command line interface of a Linux Unix shell server. Uh, later, we want to create a basic uh, Ruby script and see how can we execute this Ruby script and parsing those shell commands and finally we want to follow the 10 easy steps and we want to be ending with an easy rail shell applications. So let's get started. Um, at the beginning we have a little uh, shell is connected via SSH to the machine and actually you can enter commands. This is just very very quick way to to manage servers for system administrators. In this case, let me type a command, very typical, you name it as A, and basically just gonna send the commands to the server, the server is gonna process the input and return um, a result out of the command. I can actually retrieve different kinds of commands, in this case I'm retrieving the partitions from the file system, or actually just basic commands just like the date. Now, this is interacting with the shell. Um, how can we do this in Ruby? Well, very easy. Let's create, for example, um, a file called myruby.rb and for the purposes of this tutorial, let me create a my command variable which is going to be, let's say, the same command df-h, showing the partitions on, on my computer and let's say the, the my execution of the file is going to be the command that Ruby uses is the percentage %x and whatever is in between these brackets is going to be executed. So let's go ahead and enter and parse whatever we put in the my command, which in this case is going to be the df that's h, showing the definition of the partitions. And finally, let's print the output. So line number one, line number one says my command is df that's h. This could be any command on the shell. My exec actually is going to parse whatever it is in my command, escape it and just execute it. It's a similar like the function and PHP like system uh, or Perl. And finally puts a result directly to the standard output, which in this case is the screen. Let's go ahead and run it. And there it goes. Executes the um, df that's h and basically this is the result of the command. If I edit it, let's say to do another command like I did earlier you name that's A there it goes executes the command so this way we see how can we use the percentage X to parse something to the variable and execute it directly from the command line well that's pretty cool how about if we create a Rails applications to do the exactly same thing well, here's the recipe. The first thing you want to do is going to create a, an applica a Rails application called it Shell. Let's go ahead and do it. Rails Shell using the database MySQL for this case. There it goes. Very quick. Let's change to that shell. And there's the standard Rails structure. Let's go ahead and edit the config database YAML. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I already have it copied from and created prior to this screencast so I don't expose my user and my password. So let's go ahead and uh, copy that. And step number four is break db create. Let's create a database. Since I have my uh, user and password my database, this should. When we run the command, it's going to be the Ruby generate scaffold command execute. It's going to be the name of the input for or or for uh, command it's going to be in a string variable where we want to parse the command so it's going to be execute it's going to be a string type and if we run this the scaffold is going to generate the appropriate access accessors and the and the views and everything for for this particular controller let's run the migration in step number six and it will run very quickly smooth no problems 
Um, step number seven tells us to delete the public index HTML. So let's go ahead and delete the public index HTML. Uh, there's not going to be default unless we configure the routes here and we make the, the the map root controller the commands. So let me go ahead and uh, edit config routes and make the root the commands, which as we can see in the beginning of the file, it's already mapped. So that will, that will be okay. Let's go ahead and uh, put a magic. This is where we edit the controller and basically we want to add in the show method the execution. Uh, I know it's kind of hack because we don't typically need to do this in a in a show view but for the purpose of this demonstration it be okay. Uh, let's go ahead and add the application controllers, command controllers. There it goes. The command result is going to be executing and this is again no probably the place to do it because it's actually overloading this this controller but uh, for the purpose of this demonstration will be okay and we're parsing and rendering whatever is parsing the in the command and it's a uh, it's a command execute which is actually retrieving it so we want to go ahead and run it and that'd be perfectly fine so we can save that and finally let's go ahead and make the result accessible in the view. Here's the view where we show the command that we execute, but we also show in the command result. So what happens from this is we're done. If you run the Ruby script server, I just want to start in port 3000 and let me go ahead and open there it goes the commands let's go ahead and start with the first command that we type which is actually the df-h showing the partitions there it goes it run and execute all the partitions in the file system right there in a, in a web interface it's a stored so we can see what, what command was run previously let's go ahead and run the uname that's say there it goes again it's running without a, a problem now beware this looks really cool and I can't wait to see some applications running between servers interacting each other and kind of sending posts you know kind of ping pong sending data in a rest way sending commands back and forward maybe status of the interfaces traffic memory CPU usage you name it but there's a huge security risk here you can actually do things like that and you go straight to the kitchen and run command lines from the web interface not cool not a good idea beware make sure you secure your rails applications no matter what this is possible you see how easy it was to introduce a very very powerful command just beware of this this can be useful very helpful but also can be very dangerous so no don't just overload and put code everywhere just because it looks cool or it would do something cool analyze your code review your code and especially you know enjoy the ruby and the rails world thank you and have a great day thanks for listening thank you again for uh teach me to code.com and also um camtasia studio for the great software to make it make it possible this recording thank you all that was wonderful. Bravo! I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. I was terrible. Get him away! Hey, boo! Boo!